Well, we added another class for 2014 spring, and this is Corey on the schnitzel bunk. He's currently working on his staves <coughs> using a curved draw knife right now. He's doing the process called hollowing, and he has done a little bit of work. See the few shavings underneath him. Um, he's setting on a schnitzel bunk. That's in America we call it a shaving horse. Um, the correct pronunciation, though, is schnitzel bunk. It comes from Germany, um, where they had thousands of coopers working on the shipping docks. And um, ours is actually over 100 years old. We use it every day here in the cooper shop. So it still works excellent. He's checking his hoop to see the, make sure he's got it nice and round on the inside. And it looked pretty good right there. He's got a whole pile here on the bench to get done. Um, but we're early on day one of the second spring class okay now I'm showing you a little bit here Corey's doing a process called backing he's using a different knife he's using a straight draw knife and he, the process is backing and here in a second when he gets done using the knife he'll check it with the holding hoop um, actually he's doing very well he's got a bunch of staves here done on the bench already um, and we're still on the first morning of his class. Um, of course, I set some lofty goals for him. We'll see how that turns out. Um, but he's checking. It looks real good. Now he's going to take the holding hoop, and he backs the stave to the holding hoop, and that looks great. <coughs> so he's continuing to work. I want to get a bunch of staves done. He's going to have to have about 10 staves done before he can start putting them in the hoops. Okay. Corey's moved along. He's now using the jointer on the bench here. He's put in an edge, nice flat edge. At least that's our hope is it's nice and flat. Um, it's one of the hardest things to learn when you're doing the edges is to keep it nice and straight going across the jointer. Um, he's got his little gauge there, which I'm surprised I'm allowing him to use. No, he's, he needs it. All beginners need that. But he's doing a pretty good job. He's got a bunch of staves there piled up. <coughs> and he checks it. And I need to hold the camera steady. Um, but he's going to have to have 10 to 12 of these staves done before he can even think about putting them in hoops. Now he's doing a really good job. I don't want to fill his head full yet. He just he won't start really using bad words until this afternoon when he starts to fit them. Love the sound of shavings in the morning. Okay, Corey has enough staves in his hoop. Now he's fitting them. I'll zoom in here a little bit. He's drawn his pencil line. But all of these have to have no gaps. So what he's doing is he's carefully marking it. <coughs> and I hate coughing all the time. But he's drawn a fine line there, and he's going to have to shave that off, and then he'll fit it. But he'll take it over here to the joiner, and he'll put it on there, and he's going to pull back a little bit, and then lock his wrist and go through. Makes three or four passes there, and then he'll bring it over and put it in, and see how you're rounded. He's very good at rounding, folks. He's, he's getting very good at that. If, if we were seeing which one could round the most staves, and Corey's got that pretty well in hand. It's imperative that you lock your wrist. Now he's going to bring it back, and he's going to slide it in there, and he actually pretty doggone close. How is it on the backs? That looks good. Awesome. Awesome. Applesauce, whatever. Now he's going to move his clamps around so he doesn't drop his bucket into a thousand pieces and do the next one now this one it looks like he's he's got to take the angle out of it a little bit just a little bit he uses his pencil so he marks it all beginners I would suggest you do that because you get over to the joiner and you forget which way you have to go couple more and he'll have the hoop on All right Corey actually has his bucket in hoops 
he's tightening the metal. These are called holding hoops. And he's getting it down nice and even. Love the sound of a Cooper shop in the morning. Okay, he's looking good there. I just wanted to add where he's getting the hoops on, he's getting all the even. And if you can see here, I'm going to zoom in, there's no cracks here. If I turn the bucket, you don't see any cracks along these seams. And that's what you want. He's got to do a little score work, and he's going to have to use a spoke shave to even some of those out. But it's going to end up looking really, really sweet. So far, good job. Okay, Corey's now squaring up the bottom. He's using our big bow saw, and he's cutting down through it. A little awkward. He hasn't ever used a bow saw before. Um, I'm having fun watching him. But he's doing a real good job so far. He's square in the bottom. I teased him about blowing, so he didn't want to blow it while he's on camera. So, But he'll work his way around and saw those off. Now Corey's using a little tool called a scorp. What it does is it goes in there, and I can zoom in. He's evening out the edges on the inside of his staves. That way, when he starts to use the crows, it'll run along the bottom really nice and smooth. And then this is at a point when you start to see your bucket being close to bucket shape. And it always encourages people when they're building a bucket to start seeing some kind of a bucket shape so they know that they're making progress. And he's, <coughs> he's doing an excellent job on his bucket here. Um, see, you can even in the camera, you can see the lip. It actually goes the whole length of the bucket. Um, but he'll go in there with that little tool, and he'll scrape that out, and he'll feather it into the other stave so that it's still nice and smooth. But this tool is called a scorp. He's, he's hollowing out the inside of his bucket with it. And right there, he's using a small one, and right beside him here is the bigger one. And he'll use both of them from time to time as he's doing this little process. This usually takes right around an hour to do to get it to where you really want it to be nice and smooth. And... Basically, you, you know, other than the bottom, you're making it look good. There we go. Now we're in the afternoon of day one. Corey is already using his crows. It's a little tool that cuts the groove into the bottom of the bucket. Um, just, we seesaw back and forth. It's got little teeth on it. And... This process will take probably close to a half an hour. I don't know though, him it might take an hour. But he just seesaws back and forth. And he's cutting that groove in. You do, you do work up some muscles in this shop. He, what he's doing is he keeps looking for the depth um, but if he remembers what I told him before he started using it the crows will actually stop cutting it has depth gauges already built into it and it flat out just re it won't cut anymore because it won't can't reach the wood so as long as it's cutting like it is right now he's got a while he just isn't too patient <laughs> I can't laugh because then I jiggle. Okay, we're working again. Corey's now working on the bottom. I'll pan back here and show you. He's got the groove. You can see the groove all the way around the bottom of his bucket here. And so now he's carving the bottom. Putting a little tapered edge on it all the way around. Doing it nice and easy. Doesn't want to chip it out. Basically because he doesn't want to start all over. But so far... I've really enjoyed this one-on-one -on -one class. I've never done one like this before. And it's been really nice and interesting and has gone really, really well. I had a really good time today. <coughs> the day is winding down. Corey has his bucket, the bottom end of his bucket. Now he's trying to use a scorp. 
or no, I'm sorry, the spoke shave. Kind of looks awkward there, doesn't he, folks? Kind of funny. See, if he was a big boy like me, he wouldn't have these issues. But what he's doing is he's evening out all the staves on the bucket. And we're, after he gets all this done, we're going to go ahead and cut the handles for the handle staves. And then we'll start the process of banding. And hopefully it'll go as... Are you having fun, Corey? Yes, I'm having fun, but just... Oh, I never heard anybody whine so much about sitting on a schnitzel bar. He looks, look at him, guys. He looks like a jockey sitting on a horse. He pinches his leg. Now, see, he doesn't like that because he pinches his legs. He's going to be so sore the next couple of days. Life and times of a Cooper. It's on. Okay, one of the things that we always miss when I'm filming a class that we're doing. This is Corey's bucket, and I'm going to help him band it. And you guys have never seen me band a bucket. So we use this as a rattan. We get it from a company in North Carolina. It's simply made of, it's like a rattan willow reed. And what I do is I wrap my bucket with it. And usually, because Corey's bucket has some good taper to it, I, I will hold it over here. And I like to go across about two staves, and I take my little nippers, I know that's not old fashioned, but, and I snap it there, get rid of the excess for a second, and I'll hold it sideways here so you can see what I'm doing. What I do is I lay the bucket on its side here, and I pull them by hand, and I take a pencil mark right about the midway, go across both of them. Now what I'll do is I will cut a little mark and I'll go about halfway. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lap joint and that'll fit on the bucket. This bucket will have four bands to it. So real quickly, I get a, I use a razor knife, but you can use whatever knife you want that's sharp. What I do is I'm thinning the end because they're going to lay over each other. It's a lap joint, so they're going to be over and under each other. So I thin it out just a little, doesn't have to be a whole lot. Careful, don't cut your fingers. I still have a mark, and I take my blade, and I just kind of easily work it in, part of the way down, and then I back cut. This is very important. I'm right-handed, so I hold the, the willow in my left, and I scrape it a little bit, and I, you want to go just beyond halfway. And there you go, that's the first lap joint. Now for the second that we need to make, the mark is already here. So what I do, this was my first, I just simply flip it over. <clears throat> go through the same process. I shave it a little bit. And now I'm just going to make my back touch real quick. Go just a little bit beyond halfway and make sure there's enough cut behind. Now, what I do, as you can see, there's two lap joints and they just intersect like that and that creates a tight band. I put it on my bucket and I put it, push it on. Now, as you can see, I want this first band to be down here. <clears throat> so, I just simply take it back, 